It's actually quite good against Jug, too, because um, the, both the Call and the Healing Wave go through uh, the spin. Or I should say it's physical damage. So. Yeah. And it's really, really, really nice to be able to lock him down and be able to get him killed early on, because other, otherwise it's very difficult to kill this Juggernaut. Honestly, in an aggressive trial, it works really well. You talked about the, the Shadow Wave damage. It's actually ridiculous how much damage that Shadow Wave can do, even early on in the game. And they're actually going to pair it up with an Invoker as well, which will more than likely be a Quas Exhort Invoker, so Sun Strikes are going to be critical here. Um, and they'll just be sniping people around this map. They have this global strategy with the Invoker, and now they really, I think, because they have this Dazzle Axe Tusk combo, they'll probably need to pick a solo hero as well to, to follow this up with. So basically a known, and they know what they're going to get into right now with this combo. The question is, how do they play against it? Yeah, I'm wondering what they want to do. So typically when you're expecting some kind of axe aggression, whether it's an axe dual lane off lane or an axe tri lane where they're trying to, you know, cut creeps and just be up in your face and be really, really annoying. There's a couple ways of going about it. One is you just dodge it and you get some kind of hero that just can get away. So for instance, if they wanted to solo Quap up there and just they know that Quap won't die, um, the problem with this this idea is that normally they take your tower in three minutes and there's nothing that you can do unless you're like, crap, let's rotate heroes. Well, if you're going to rotate heroes, why not start trialing to begin with? So I think the best thing to do is, and it's kind of scary now because they've already drafted the Juggernaut, is to try to pick as many ranged heroes as possible. Uh, in fact, I saw Ninjas in Pajamas do this strat against someone not too long ago. I think it was Empire, actually. I forget mm -hmm. what it was for, but they were playing against Empire. Maybe it was even Star Ladder. Yeah, where they ran, there was an axe tri lane, or axe in the lane or something, and I think they actually ran it aggressively, but that's still, that's the point still stands that they ran like Viper AA and like Venge or something like that. Just really strong ranged heroes with tons of damage, and it really owned hard. Um, so I, I'm kind of scared right now for basically unknown because, especially with that tide pick, because that's going to be probably off lane. That means Venge and Juggernaut safe lane with some other support. That's very weak against an axe tri lane. Vengeful Spirit's already got low range. Juggernaut is a melee hero, which is already a problem against Axe, and you can't rely on Blade Fury to get out of Axe. So, a little bit scared for basically unknown. I, I think they're going to need to try to change something up or do something different here. Yeah, this is going to be dangerous, honestly. We saw what can happen in the beginning of the game. Juggernaut, even if he gets farm later on in the game, I mean, in the beginning of the game, Juggernaut actually really needs to get off to a good start because his ninjas and pajamas could just snowball at that point. He won't be able to Omni Slash. You won't have, you know, Saints Phase and a Mask Madness to help out as well. And then, you know, Invoker gets farm, he starts getting items, and that becomes scary. And I, I don't really imagine seeing this Venge or Juggernaut being useful if they get aggro trial in the gun. So they have to pick up a really good last support here. And even that seems kind of, it's going to be rough. And it, you know, Ninja's Pajamas, they make sure they get rid of those ranged shears. They got rid of the Viper like you talked about, and the Ancient Apparition was, in fact, that last ban as mm -hmm. well. So, yeah. that's really smart coming out from NIP. The AA, was ba the AA ban was pretty good, too. I, I think I'm trying to, you know, get into the metagame of Axe here because Axe is so popular. What's good against Axe? And there's a couple things. Um, like, I, like I talked about, Viper, AA is not bad. Uh, Anti-Mage is actually really good in the mid to late game because if you ever go on him when he's popped his Manta, or even if he hasn't, you just burn all of Axe's mana and he can't really do much. Um, but as far as the laning stage, I actually think uh, Shadow Demon is really good against Axe um, for the one reason to kind of disjoint the combo that's coming out, but two, if you just uh, just put the disruption on Axe and throw those uh, illusions at him, they actually hurt him a lot because they can spin too. Uh, and then of course the ultimate's very good at all stages of the game. So I'm wondering if basically a known go for a Shadow Demon. They need another support, they, it needs to be a ranged hero, and it needs to be something that can deal with Axe, so I, I would suggest Shadow Demon. Yeah, it's certainly a possibility. I actually would love to see a Shadow Demon. He's woefully underused in the current metagame, I'd say. Mm -hmm. He's picked occasionally in, uh, in certain situations like this, but we'll have to wait and see for BU. For NIP, they need, uh, let's see, Tusk support, Dallas support, Axe in the lane, Invoker. Yeah, they need that solo here we were talking about. And... Assu assuming they go aggro Charlie. I'm, right. I'm assuming it's just because I've seen this before, and it was so damn good. And that, that could be it, the solo really? short clink. So we don't know for sure, but that's what uh, I think we both presume. Yeah, they, you could also dodge the trialing for basically a known, and that might be fine, but at the same time, you'll probably just see musical lanes coming out from these two teams. Someone will go, you know, to one lane, they'll switch that around, and they'll just try to dodge, and maybe even try to, if you're in ninja's pajamas, match the trialing. So we'll wait and see how that does pan out. Yeah. It's going to be kind of interesting early game, I'd say, for both teams. The scary thing, though, about dodging, like I said, against Axe, especially when they go aggro, is that that tower will die so fast, because yeah. you can always just cut the wave, and then you have no... You, you literally have no waves to support your tower, and so that tower will die in a matter of, you know, three minutes at max if they really want to push the issue. Lena here, it's not bad. It gives you a 
a lot of range with the Dragon Slave for harassment. Um, but if she ever gets caught, she's dead. <laughs> like, her stun is very easy to dodge, especially in lane, just because it's so slow. And, uh, I mean, I, I see what their idea is with Alina pick. It's a long-range nuke, and she has a very, very long-range attack, actually. But I'm still a little bit worried <laughs> for uh, that lane. Yeah, I mean, the base damage isn't that high from a right-click. Uh, it's really just coming down to setting up uh, a stun with the Vengeful Spirit Magic Missile followed up by, like, a Light Strike Array or something and hope that you can get multiple heroes and do a lot of damage, but that's difficult because I, I just feel like Lina's fine, but they might have been better off going for Disruption. If the Lina doesn't get caught, you can Light Strike Array to stop any sort of progression coming out, but it's difficult. This is not going to be an easy lineup for basically a node to play against, and NIP should have a pretty good time. This Clinics could also, if they give him a good lane or if he gets enough... Uh, so low in terms of experience, and he could just absolutely go to work on some of these heroes as well. So mm -hmm. we'll see how it pans out. And I think basically, you know, they're already off to kind of a tricky start here with their draft the way it is. Well, it looks like it's going to be an off lane co op for Sexy Bambo, as I'm pretty sure he's their off lane player. He's got a sentry and, he's, and a ward. <coughs> and he actually gives. Oh, no, he's getting a pool too. They're, they're like indecisive about what they want to do down here. And they're wasting a bit of time with me. They are. Look at them. They're just <laughs> going back and forth. All oh, right. He's got, he's got his pool. He's ready to go. And I think they are expecting um, the clinks to be solo short, which is why they want the co-op to go against him, which is not too bad. And then bottom, it looks like it may just be dual ancestor. I think that maybe Hans can just walk up here to place a ward or something. Yeah, I think so. And then he'll but, just walk uh, back down. He has boots first as well. I would very, I would be very surprised to see Tusk not in that lane bottom. Yeah, me too. Um. But we'll see how this pans out. Honestly, this is... There's a stat that Mopax posted earlier on in this week when we saw another offlane or, like, safe lane co-op. There's a stat that's, like, ridiculous. That the safe lane or side lane co-op has, like, one win in 6.83 or something ridiculous. Mid lane co-op yeah. has a pretty decent win rate. And then save, save lane or offlane co-op is just not doing well at all in this current metagame. I actually think offlane co-op is really, really good, though. I just think either, A, people... Oh, actually, there might be some action near bottom. And they're going to go on Seal Kid going the wrong way, but they don't chase him down. Actually, Paris is going to be blocked off, or Yosipan, rather, is the one that's blocked. Magic Missile Gust, they're getting first blood here. The spin goes in, and already this form of aggression coming out. They get an easy kill with Naomi picking up first blood, and they just were not expecting that for NIP. So this tri lane gets off to a rough start, honestly. They were just... There was miscommunication about what they wanted to do. Like, the Axe wanted to stay and fight. The rest of them wanted to run, just because they think they knew that their numbers were... or they were outnumbered. Just because of the mid player of uh, mind control walked down there, so yeah, they just were not all on the same page at all. Clearly, and I, I actually think that if Invoker was there, even though Invoker is pretty bad level one, th I mean this combination is so strong. I think they actually did have a chance to man up, but they just didn't have the numbers, and yeah, their communication was not all there. We'll see what this gives them for basically, you know, they got a little bit of experience, a couple of, a uh, bit of gold as well, and honestly, that, that's not bad to start off with, but now how will this tri -lane progress against the aggro tri -lane? Because we talked about how deadly it is, and I don't really know if Sox could actually get any farm here on this Juggernaut anymore, unless they pull, so. Yeah, they did pull once, it looks like it's going to be a little bit disrupted here. Actually, they only pulled half the creep wave, so they actually lose the creeps. That's really good for the Radiant side. Solomon Quap has 49% win rate in 33 games, so it's not even that uh, that impressive in its own right. But they need to wait for the Axe to hit level 2 to, to do anything in this lane. They need that call. Yeah. Going for the counter helix obviously gives you that extra bit of damage, but until you hit that level 2, which again, aggro tri lane, you're not going to get the most experience unless you're getting kills. So it'll take some time to get them some levels, but actually, mind control in the mid lane, doing very well for himself with 10 last hits. Eight mothers sitting at just a measly 5 currently. Again, Exhort Invoker will have some decent damage in a bit, but for now, it's kind of low. Meanwhile, Sakshika going to work against Seal Kid. As it stands right now, again, we'll have to wait and see how the other lanes go up, the solo lanes. I think Klinks could do pretty well for himself in this top lane. He's got seven last hits, but the Quap Bambo is having a fantastic Whoa. time with ten last hits. So. Yeah, he's actually doing very well. Yeah, that's really good. That extra pool really did pay off, though. He's actually burned through all his regen, so that's five trees in total right now. Um, so that's that's very good for him. He's got his bottle on the way. And he's actually got a sentry ward for the Clinks too, if he can get them low enough. Although Clinks does have some good regen too, so 
it's beginning to even out in this top lane, but that's really good for uh, for the Radiant. Like this, this is the lane that they were expected to lose badly. Yeah. And in the mid lane, as you mentioned, the, the Tide's doing really well. Yeah, this is actually the, the the lanes are going pretty in favor of an IP. They're not really shutting down Sashka from farming. They have the same last hits as Jonas and Van and. Hanskin and Jonas and Fan are ready to go. I mean, you see Hanskin is invis, and he might go for the snowball. Jonas and Fan has his level two with Berserker's Call. Do they have Shadow Wave? Absolutely. And also has his level two on the Dazzle as well. But now they're backing up. They're pretty close to their tower. They need this wave to push out if they want to be super successful in getting a game. But we'll see how it pans out for the Axe here. They really want to see get vision of this uh, Lina, or at least one of the supports, because they 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 will die instantly, basically. Kind of so. casual, nice trick away from Matt. He does have a yeah. clarity, so no big deal there. Not a, and this she just says, "Let me just throw some fire at your face." And well, now look at this. There, they gotta go ahead and cut the creep wave. And Jonas yep. a fan. He's he says, "I'm fine." Wave of terror. That's fine. But Lena's really the only person that can stop him from doing this. And they're thinking yeah. about it. Sal's gonna go. Sakshka is gonna try to back away. Counter Helix goes. Magic missile. Maybe a snowball. It's gonna go right as they dodge the Light Strike array. And Paris, Blade Fury is it up. It is gonna hit him. There's the Berserker's call going. Sun Strike from Long Range, but Paris avoids it just a bit too late. Now there's the Grave coming out from Seal Kid. They're still going to work. They get the nice uses of the Ice Shards. Matt is in some trouble, but they do trade one for one. The Magic Missile going at a perfect time. And how unfortunate that Sun Strike misses had it been a little bit early, and that would have been fine. Yeah, he's also gone for only two into Exort, so it wouldn't have even done that much damage. I'm surprised he didn't go for three Exort for extra global power. But yeah, uh, I mean, the call is only level one, I believe, so it doesn't oh. last for very long. So oh, Era gets a solo kill and he salves up and actually avoids a lot of the Shadow Strike damage. Oh, that is huge. Bambo was having a heck of a lane, but that, that hurts a bit, so. Damn. Well... I mean, very nicely played, but I. This is kind of to be expected. Like, I, I'm still surprised that the Quap is actually doing as well as she is. But uh, nice for Era to bring that back. He needs to ferry some regen out though now. Or else Helix, he's gonna... maybe a Berserker's call. No. So it's so hard to keep track of everything on the map. I know. You have this aggro trial lane and the top lane. You're just like, I don't know when people are gonna die. It's, it's difficult. It's hard. This tide is destroying, man. 27 to the 14. Almost doubled the CS of the Invoker. The Exhort Invoker, mind you. This isn't the, sh you know, crappy Quaswex that hits for 45 damage at the start. This is an Exhort Invoker with the aid of a Forged Spirit. So he's really dominated mid lane. Dude, mind control has been impressive. We talk a lot about Bambo on this team for basically an you know, because of how they played against Speedpone, but mind control has been on point in these last couple of games. And. Yeah, dominating is one way to look at it. He absolutely is. This invoker is getting just shut down. 15 last hits, and we'll see what he goes for in terms of itemization. But the tide already has his arcanes, and blink dagger should come soon. I mean, he's blink, or he's gonna have arcanes bottle and blink pretty soon, and that'll be frightening. That'll be one way to stop this aggression coming up from NIP with this aggressive dire trialing. Yeah, and uh, Unknown are just playing the tri lane well. Like, their supports are sitting really far back. They're making sure that they don't get in range of even the snowball from Tuscar. Because they know that, yeah, they can maybe initiate onto the Juggernaut, but the stun of the snowball won't actually hit him or hurt him because he's got Blade Fury. So it, it's got to be all from lucky procs of the counter helix and the, uh, the heal. But if they don't have tons of creeps by their side, that heal's not going to do too much. And do you think this lane is not really doing that much? Do you want to see them maybe blow up the Sagro tri lane, or do you want to be a bit more aggressive here for the Sire team? It, I mean, the first blood really kind of screwed things up for them. Um, they, the Axe got to lane late as a result, mm -hmm. and uh, someone, one of them got first blood, so that means extra gold for them. And Yeah, that was extra gold boots, basically, for the Venge, so she's able to keep her distance. Um, I will say that Axe is still farming better than the Jug, right? Oh, actually, it's pretty much even, so... Yeah. I mean, that's the problem. Oh, Naomi's gonna get spotted out. They're gonna go for the Ice They miss! Snowball mm -hmm. could have came after that. That would have been a huge kill. Naomi playing a bit too far up. And tempted fate, if you will. Yeah, I just feel like NIP aren't really getting anything out of this lane right now other than getting Axe farm, which is fine, but they're not necessarily shutting down the Juggernaut. So... They're just waiting for that, that right opening. And, uh... They get another level up in the Berserker's Call suit. Actually, no, it's gonna be level 1 for a while. Yeah, if, if they're on point with the Sunstrike, I think it's a guaranteed kill, especially in one of the supports. And the Sunstrike's level just, 4 now, but yeah. They just don't have the vision, number one. They have this Observer Ward in lane, but there's also this Radiant Observer Ward, so... It's kind of difficult to get into position and go on these supports, and they, they certainly don't want to go on Sashka. 
And now they're going to TP down. Mm. The Tidehunter is ravaged. They're ready to go. No blink, obviously, but with a magic missile going in. Electric Rafe, it's there. Hanskin actually avoids it. Ravage is going to go. Yodas and Fan doesn't notice the Tide walk in. And he just gets obliterated by those tentacles. He's done. 17 seconds for him to respawn. Just a nice gank coming from Mike Usual. He gets the kill. He's up to 1,200 gold now. Nicely played. Yeah, nice rotation. And the, the thing about those kind of rotations is usually it's like, oh, well, space created, our invoker's farming. Well, he's actually not farming very well. He's still only got 27 CS in eight minutes. That's pretty bad. So Ape Mother really not connecting with CS or just getting outplayed here in the mid lane one way or the other just does not have the farm he needs to have. Mm -hmm. Setting up top room, it is an illusion. Bembo scouts it out. Unfortunately, couldn't refill his bottle. That would have been huge for him, but... He's still 30, sitting at 31 CS. Oh, Sakshika, there's the Sun Strike. The Berserker's Call goes as well. The Blade Fury, and look at that! The Light Strike Ray, or rather the Dragon Slave, just destroys the Dazzle. And they're gonna get the Axe as well. What a disaster for NIP early on in this game. They wanted to go on the Juggernaut. They wanted to see how it turned out because, you know, the Blade Fury is good, but it, the Sun Strike will pierce it as well as obviously the, the physical damage, but they just didn't do anything to him. He was fine. Yeah, well, they're going to have to rely on their solos, especially Era, to pick this one up for him, or for them. 53 CS for him. He's got Treads, Aquila. So if he wanted to go for an Orchids, it's going to be relatively late, all things considered. I know his CS is good. He won his lane, but he's gone for a lot of utility items beforehand. Mm -hmm. And so for now, yeah, he'll he'll be not necessarily a factor, at least for a bit of time. And the save could be something in Volker, especially because I think he's going for a Midas. So this is just, and Naomi's actually roaming in with the smoke, and they can easily get a kill, although no Ravage for 50 seconds. Invoker's not the tankiest guy in the world, so they might be able to bring him down top lane, though. Bambo getting roamed down here. Era's looking to right-click, and well, actually, they just blow up that aggro trial, and they know that they've, they've got a lost cause in that, in that bottom lane, so that's a problem. Yeah. Tusk comes down here to try to get some free experience and maybe some farm. So, if you can get level 6. Have you played the new Tusk, by the way, with the ultimate? It's so annoying. No, I haven't. Like, he used to be able to just press it and it was, like, activated. But mm -hmm. now you have to, like, press it and click it. I, oh, it bugs the crap out of me. It's one of those small changes where you're just like, oh my god, why? Why did you have to do that? But... Yeah, like, I, I tried it, like, I pressed it. And then I would, like, attack someone. I'm like, why is my ult not working? Uh, actually, look at this Lena sitting up here. Era is not spotting her out at all. Oof. He's, uh, he might get jumped on here if he's not lucky. He has a death pack, so he's pretty tanky. They have a dust? Yeah, they do have a dust on Quap. Oh, Light Strike oh. missed, though. That was just kind of a random throwing out Light Strike saying, hey, let's get this kill. But no, Bambo couldn't really get there in time with the, the Shadow Strike. And Arrow actually is just sort of shadowing Matt, who leaves the lane. And 5-2. to two. Now Sun Strike's going to go. Actually will not hit. Bambo he blinks away just in time. Arrow went way too early. If they actually wanted to get that kill, he needed to wait for the Sun Strike to actually hit. Yeah. Rap from Hanskin. Hanskin actually has a haste rune. But Bambo is not going to get caught by this. They don't have an Observer War top rune spot, though. But yeah. look at this Ancient stack coming out. This Tide is going to be freaking far, man. He's got to have his blink after this Ancient stack, no problem. He's going to have a blink in like 11 minutes. Do they know that the Tuskar is here? He's just kind of sitting out by no. himself. They don't have a division of him. Not right now, anyway. They will pretty soon, I imagine. Well, I, don't, I don't think Tusk can kill anybody, no, so he's yeah. just going to reveal he's himself, gonna, and that's going to be He's going to walk away. He's going to get gushed, and he's going to walk away. Hanskin is just going to get chased by Mike Control a bit, and then... Actually, I don't know what's happening. Hanskin's just like, I'm not afraid of you. If they get any other hero there, he's probably just going to die, though, so he's got to be careful. Yeah, I... <laughs> Maybe wasting Tide's time, I guess, is what his plan is. This is going to be so much gold, though, for the Tide. I think he wanted the experience of the stack. But now Scream this is going to hurt him. Shadow Strike, Gush. He's going to pop the sigil. Sonic Wave just blows him up. Yeah, Bam is like, listen, no, forget this. Sun Strike, it's going to hit. But where's the follow up? There's going to be the uh, Battle Hunger going in. The Scream of Pain, Air Right Clicks once. The low ground missed. Not that it matters. The Battle Hunger will clear it up, and Jonas and Finn gets the kill. But while that's happening, Tide does finish up the Ancient Stack, where he's finishing it up. His Blink Dagger's now done, and that's pretty nice. Definitely not worth it though for Nip. They're about to lose their bottom tower. Or at least getting pressured a lot. Hanskin will TP down there. And you still have Tide taking the stack. Actually, he needs more mana to finish this off. So maybe, yeah, he'll get a bottle up here. And he will finish the stack. Yeah, that's going to be good for him. He actually has got his Blink Arcanes, man. He is so farmed. Yeah. yeah, what was he playing when we last casted him? Do you remember? Because I remember I him. Don't. I think it was Panda, actually. I think he played Panda one game. I know Bambo played it in the off. Oh, one. yeah, you're right. 
Maybe it was yeah. Zeus? Was this, I don't Zeus remember. Zeus sounds about right. Yeah, he definitely played Zeus one game for sure. But I remember uh, him impressing me. I, rem I remember that. Because I didn't know who the guy was. I was like, okay, he's, he's pretty decent. Well, this guy, is, he's been on point, and he'll continue to be on point, I think, as he continues to form up. And I, I really think that he's going to be putting a lot of pressure on NFP. Yeah, you have a Vanguard on Axe, but everyone else has no farm except for the Klings. I mean, he has a, a pretty quick Oblivion staff, actually, after we thought that maybe it's going to take a bit longer to get that Orchid. Might not be as late as we once thought. Meanwhile, Mayomi does pick up the Tier 1 tower down bottom with the help of the Juggernaut who wanted that last hit, I'm sure. Um, and I don't know, once this, once Unknown start fighting here with this, uh... Ravage and Omni Slash. This things can get a bit dicey for an IP for sure. Yeah, I don't really like the Vanguard on on Axe either. I think you get Vanguard when you've won your lane and you've crushed and you can afford to get it. But I I think they need the Blink. <laughs> I think they're they're gonna need. It. They have these nice stacks to work with though, and so maybe it won't be that big of a deal. And actually, they oh, the Kura snipe dies. from Era. He gets the Kura. Nothing on it though. He'll Shadow Walk away or Skeleton Walk, and they got no Naomi doesn't have dust. any detection. Yeah. He might be able to get a kill. If he had Orchid, he could definitely get a kill. But mm. no. He can't really go on Paris. Just gonna steal the experience. He's actually gonna dark pack that maybe and run away. Nah. Just gonna steal the experience. Skeleton walks ready and yeah, he's not gonna go for it. Yeah, or... he's gonna the experience, but they're gonna try to go for the kill. Ice shards, and actually Paris is gonna get away. But there's the Walrus Plus to keep him in place. Jonas and Fan, the swap goes out, but Paris gets right clicked down. The machine gun of Aaron. Mayomi's in trouble as well. Berserker's call, but there's this group of pain. Sonic wave, but Aaron's fine. He gets dusted and grave. Mayomi, he needs to get calling blade. Will it happen? Sun strikes gonna go. That'll secure the kill. Ravage on the backside. Air is gonna fall. Turning it for a two for two trade thus far. A goddamn bloodbath, and Jonas and Van walks out, Berserker's call, oh he missed, Bambo blinks, and Jonas and Van actually just waited too long, oh no, he needs to survive, his blink is so close to being completed, and he might not, actually they won't chase any further, okay, he's fine, just kidding. Yep, and yeah, very nicely done by uh, Bambo, he did a lot of damage there, I have to say that that was a really quick reaction of the heal plus grave from Dazzle. I think Clicks would have died much quicker. Oh, hey, Mother, he's caught out in No Man's Land, actually. He tried Should that have... Ghost Walk, and then boom, the uh, dust came out immediately afterwards. It's rough. I think he should have known that they were there. They just were fighting there. Maybe he just thought they were too low and wanted to heal, but there's the Blink for Axe, so... It's not too bad that he went Vanguard first, because he got the Blink pretty quickly after with the help of these stacks. So, we'll, we'll see how much more he can contribute now. It should be easy to get these Blink calls plus Sunstrike. Yeah. This is not looking too terrible for NIP, despite how things went in the early game. My control is really farmed though at this point, and Jug's getting there. Walrus Punch slows my control down. They're trying desperately to get there with the Berserker's Call, and they'll find him. Snowball goes in, Calling Blade. Uh, it's not really in Threshold right yet, and actually uses his fan as just walk away. And that's going to be a nice use to the Shadow Wave to keep them up fighting fit, but tanky ass Tidehunter, man. And now he even gets a regen to his aim as well. Oh, but they're gonna go on Mad Sunstrike goes in at the perfect time, and the Calling Blade, they'll chase after the Tide. He blinks just before the Searing Arrows hit him in the back. And the Tier 1 Tower getting assaulted now. They're playing 4 and 5 man Dota. The Sunstrike is obviously being that 5th man, and they get the Tier 1 Tower off the back end of it. When Chuggernaut has an ulti that he really, really wants to use, he hasn't been able to find a target. It's hard to really hone in on a target with the Juggernaut when there's a Dazzle sitting behind with a Grave. Mm -hmm. Not to mention these these heroes are pretty tanky. Like, Klinks isn't thought of as a tanky hero, but when he used the Dark Pack, was it called Death Pack or Dark Pack? Death, Death Pack. Uh, with Strength Treads. Look, he's almost 1700 HP, man. That's that's actually a really tanky hero. So it's kind of a hard game. Like, he did well in the laning phase, but outside of that, it's actually pretty hard uh, for Juggernaut to really kill someone with this ulti. Yeah, the Graves are going to be huge. Obviously, the Axe is naturally tanky. Hanskin has Snowball to help out as well. This is not an easy game for him to Omni Slash and destroy people with. Unlike what we saw Excalibur accomplish with Meepo and Ah, oh, Jonas Fan is always gonna get dusted. The casual dust coming out from Unknown, the next level uh, they knew. So actually, he'll just walk away and head to the mid lane. And all right, we'll continue on. We're nothing uh, of value lost in that situation. Yeah, they they thought that maybe the Clinks uh, broke their smoke, but it was just an invis for him. So unfortunately, couldn't get the uh, wave of terror to cancel the blink. And there's the orchids for. Clicks. Not the, like I said, not the earliest orchids, but uh, it's definitely still a good item this game. Like, there's not going to be a Manta very quickly on the Juggernaut. You initiate on him, he's pretty much dead. Not very good against Tidehunter, but uh, it's still, a, you know, obviously an overall good item on Clicks. 
I like this play coming up from NIP, but this is going to take some time, even with Wave of Terror and Gush. We might see them get there in time. Uh, Seal can not going to check the pit. Hanskin is going to throw the sigil off. Will it be too late? Bamba walks in as well. He blinks. They know that he's there down. They're going to try to fight this, but they actually stop the blink with Laguna. Dragon Slave Ravage coming in on to three. Mind Control says, how do you do? Oh the Sonic Wave blowing up one, but they do get the snowball off with Jonas and in some trouble. Berserker's call blinks away. Buyback coming out from Seal Kid. Grave available, but it does get in, and Bambo now chasing too far. Calling Blade is there. Jams it in. Great buyback from Seal Kid. They do get the clicks in the back end. A two for two trade with the buyback coming in, but guess who's in the top lane? Eight Mother is split pushing the tier three tower, and 18 minutes into the game, but back to the fight. Snowball going, and Hotskin still alive. Seal Kid desperately trying to keep him up. Grave available in 10 seconds. Shadow Wave's gonna go. Dragon Slave misses. Sunstrike mad in trouble. Jonas Fed gets the kill. He's dominating. Mind Control gets the kill on the other side on Hotskin. Calling Blade no minute, but they don't need it. An NIP hold at the Roche Pit. Tier 3 Tower falls. 8 Mother leaves. What a freaking crazy ass fight. What the hell happened? Holy. Well, Jug still didn't ulti. I think that's kind of a big deal. Especially when you have a three man Ravage, uh, and they're all still in the range of his Anchor Smash, too. It was a really, really nice snowball that I think really saved the whole fight from the Tuscar. Just buying time for the entire team to stay alive and buying time for the Invoker to push the tier three tower at 18, 17 minutes. It's a really nice place from Hanskin, showing just how strong the snowball is. Uh, Sigil's really strong, too, but yeah, I didn't see it, but just the Jug did an ulti or something? Yeah, he, he got uh, picked off by Klinks. I think he might have been Orchid even as well. I Gambo, okay. sun stricken? No, he actually avoids by walking. It must north, have been the uh, yeah, it must have been that orchids. But speaking of which, yeah, uh, Bambo, Yule Scepter actually, but Berserker's call. Oh, the blink just in time for Bambo, and now mind control and mad chasing after Junus. In fact, he's dead. Berserker's call is gonna go, but the Laguna Blade says, "Well, give me that money." Zap, boom goes the dynamite. What else is going on? Arrow's getting chased Roshan. down. Roshan is in fact going on. Is he dead? Oh, this is going to be close. This is going to be close. They're going to get it. Air picks up the Aegis and the Snowball. The AoE disruption is real. Walrus punched into Paris, but look at this damage coming out. There's going to be a scream of pain. And there's going to be a miss on the subject, but finally Omni Slash gets off. Jonas Van just bought back, but he gets graved. One calling blade. The second misses. Naomi's still going to chase down Berserker's call. He is going to fall too dead. Air chasing after the light strike rate, Mad TPing away. Meanwhile, my control, Eight Mother battling out, Bambo using himself, Mad Control getting oh, orchided, but the action crack and chills it off. Bambo's gonna fall. Double kill for Eight Mother. Arrow still chasing after my control. Another searing arrow. He's low. 200 damage, 200 HP left in his pool, but actually, he'll get out, he'll TP away. Still, though, the fight goes in favor of NIP. And uh, they are running out, basically, and they're getting these victories. Yeah, man, the, the Tuscar snowball with Dazzle is so strong. It's it's really hard to kill anybody and actually focus someone down. You, they don't have. They need to burst someone with Lena ulti, but she already used it there to get that to finish off that kill on the axe. But like we saw, I think he bought back anyway, so it didn't really matter too much. <laughs> My lord, the mech and the ravage coming out. Air does have, of course, his Aegis, and he actually they don't have to attach him. Oh god! Oh, oh no! He actually revealed himself. Why, Why? did he do that? And the Laguna Blade to finish him off for now. They have That's detection. The that was a Big misplay. Sentries down. Life's Wreck Ray. Era actually gets blown up. Now there's going to be the Berserker's call. Is there a calling blade? Naomi sticks up and stays alive. Jonas Ben might not be so lucky. He has the blade now, but there's no follow-up coming in. Dazzle finally TPs in. Weave, but my control does blink away. And in the past 5 to 10 minutes, this game has devolved into Man Fight Central, <laughs> where teams run at each other and hope for the best. And it works out for an NIP for the most part. But they did lose Era there. That was a really big misplay by Era. He just attacked for no reason. They didn't have any sentries. They, maybe he thought they did, but uh, yeah, absolutely uh, was a freebie there from him. And kind of puts him back into this game, because if you look at the net worth, it's pretty much all Nip except for the, uh, the Tidehunter, who's very, very farmed. Jug has really not much at all at, with just a Mask of Madison and Yasha. This is not where you really want to be. And if you saw his last ulti, it wasn't that impressive. He was onto an axe that's pretty damn tanky, and it didn't really do too much to him. So, he needs more items, and it's pretty much all up to this Tide Hunter. And actually, I will say Bambo is doing a ton of damage. He's going axe too, which I think is a very good item choice. I like Seal Kid is. I don't know what you're doing here, buddy. I mean. <laughs> all right. I don't know what he thought was going to happen, but. 
Hopefully not that. Nice shards go and actually connect on my control. EMP going in. Blink Berserker's call. Paris is here. Omni Slash is going to go. But look at all these summons uh. taking it up. It does no damage. Sonic Wave comes in and blows up three. Nobody dead yet. Hoskin gets the snowball off. Unis and Fed still chasing after some heroes. So far, one for one exchange. Well, Naomi in trouble now. They actually get Hanskin. Calling Blade onto one. Now Bambo getting Berserkers called the Deafening Blast. Can they get two? Bambo actually stays alive because the Calling Blade misses yet again. Air finally rotates in. Orchid's up in three seconds. Bambo has Blink ready to go. Chasing after him is bad. Blink's away, but Eric is still shadowing them. He could dive then and get the kill, but he's not going to. Uh, turns into a 3 for 3 Actually, he's Jonas Van chasing after this Lena, but she's pretty speedy. With Phase Boot, she'll back away. and More fighting and an even trade. Yeah, again, a really dismal Juggernaut ulti. That time it was around four creeps in addition to two extra heroes. And then after he ulted, he ran away. And there was two heroes that got stunned. And I don't know if they were ulted from Quap, but they just took a ton of damage. And had he just stuck it out and sat there with either a Blade Fury or just auto attacks, I think they would have died. And, and it would have been a much better exchange. So, um, yeah, I think he's playing a little bit both too scared on the Juggernaut, but also not finding the the most optimal ultis. Although, we did talk about it, it's kind of hard because it's not the best Juggernaut game, to be honest, in the mid game. Bambo, Berserker's call, but I think Genesis Van is dead here. Yeah, the, the Lena just pops up the Dragon Slave and Bambo comes in and gets a pretty big kill and he's very close to his egg, so. And this is something that Bambo has to, you know, declare to his team. is like, listen, we can get these kills if you stick around for Sonic Wave, especially after my Axe is completed. Like, mm -hmm. Sasha, it doesn't matter what kind of Omni Slash you get off. Like, until there are BKBs, NIP might not be able to survive the Onslaught of Dying basically a known. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I will say Bambo has been really impressing me lately. Like, in the last series that we watched him when we cast this as well, like, he's been playing very nicely. Got a lot of farm. It... Like, he was doing well up in the top lane when he really shouldn't have done as well as he did mm -hmm. against uh, what I think is to be a, a superior laner in the in the Clinks. Just Clinks did so much damage. But I think Bambo realizes he has a lot to prove. And honestly, within these last couple of series alone, he's just he's shown a lot to, I think, a mm -hmm. lot of us. So I've been impressed like you, and we'll see how he carries on this play as uh, this game continues. It's only game number one, actually, and we've already had a pretty solid game between these two teams. So let's see how yeah. he finishes it off. Blink Dagger on Tusk. This is when things really change for this hero and he comes to a whole new level. Uh, it becomes very, very easy to actually get into position to save people with a snowball now. Whereas before, you kind of have to like stand nearby. You can't really cast spells aggressively or do your own thing because you have to be so close to make sure you save somebody with a blink. It kind of solves those problems because you can just blink from anywhere and immediately snowball to save your teammates. So, yeah, this is when the whole new level of Tusk comes into play. Yeah, this is, this is where the skill cap gets a bit high. And it's very difficult for anybody to stop a snowballing tusk at this point. I mean, if he can get in and snowball, you pretty much save your team and reset the fight, get a stun off, heal mm -hmm. up, shadow wave, and you're good to go. And I mean, the eight mother with a necro three now, he has a blink dagger as well, but this is where it's going to get difficult. The sonic wave for Bambo now that much more potent. If he gets to level three ultimate as well, oh god, it's going to be ridiculous. The cooldown obviously decreased, the damage increased, and you know, we'll see how yeah. this pans out. The cooldown is the biggest thing. Just having a 40 second of, or you know, only a 40 second cooldown and being able to spam it out basically all the time and be very, very liberal with it. So you can basically cast it twice during a team, a team fight. Whereas before it's like you only get one shot to not miss that chance to throw that opportunity, yo. Oh my lord. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of, I don't know. That was really it lame. Just happens, it just, it just happened, man. Listen, I had to go When you it. cast, you have to let it happen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, drop the rapper. Oh god. You can all fail fish that because I. Damn well deserve that. No, dude. Embrace your inner Eminem. It's fine. <laughs> Walking up top is mind control. Mad with him, shadowing him, being his bodyguard. And they're going to try to finally take this last two in tower in the top lane. And Eight Mother's nearby actually he needs to kind of leave. He realizes this. He gets out. Bot's done now as well. Blink Dagger Bot's uh, Midas Necro Book. And he starts using his Lacrota because, of course, he does have two points at the Wex. He can even bots down bottom if he wants to. This 2 2 tower should fall. Actually, they're going to glyph it. They're going to have the tie TP, and they see him with the ice sigil. That's the problem. My control just TPs right on top of it. Sigil's so damn useful. Yeah, the, the good thing is, I wonder if sigil actually affects Juggernaut before he ulties. Like, it, a, it, it makes him invulnerable, though, right? So yeah, I don't think, I think he... so. so oh, oh, Eight Mother's dead. No, Bambo throws out a useless, uh, unfortunate ultimate. They actually get a 1 for 1 trade, but they get Eight Mother. That's the bigger point. Um, there is the Mantis style now, so the Orc is not going to be as useful, but I think you're right. It makes you invulnerable. It should take off all of your... I don't know. 
It's honestly, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I instinctively would think it wouldn't work because dude, we need vulnerable. we need like professors of Dota mechanics. Like, like I should know this crap, but you, no, don't, no, no, see, no. you don't see this interaction very often. So no, dude. Like, listen, people need to study Dota mechanics. That needs to be a college course because right now people are having issues. Maybe's gonna get soul burn <laughs> with the orchid, and Eric just gets an easy kill. So yeah. But uh, mind control getting really, really huge too. Like, has the gem, has the mech completed, and just about 4,000 gold. So, I presume it to be a refresher. But if he wants a refresher and to be able to cast mech and double ulti with all his other spells in between, I think he needs more mana. So, yeah, might even want to think about a Shiva's. Force uh, staff even might not be a bad idea. Force staff's not bad, but they're like, this is very physical damage base on Nip. Like, pretty much everything. Invoker, yeah, he's his spells are very much magical, but Clink's is all physical. The heal is physical. Axe is all physical. So, I, I could see a case to be made about Shiva's here. Yeah, I think Shiva's is a good choice. And that, that will give him more intelligence as well, whereas the Force staff gives him immediately 10, so... Mm -hmm. Something to keep in mind. My control looking at the Roche Pit from the high ground here. It's actually about to respawn. Hanskin might stay in here long enough. He also could just use Sigil to uh, scout it out, so... Nice! The awesome fan actually just calling Blitz a creep just to get the buff going. <laughs> that satisfying sound that goes across the screen, and he'll just move at light speed up to the top lane. I, I think Unknown are still in a rough position. They certainly have the potential to come back with the team they have and the items they're purchasing, but... This is gonna be a close game, I think, even down to the wire. Yeah, it's been it's been fun to watch. Like I still look at the net worth of the three cores of Nip, and it's really really high there. Uh, Era did pick up his blink. He's going for a BKB now, which is actually not that. It's good. It's necessary against the the Ravage, but uh, the Sonic Wave still goes through it. That's yep. one of the newest changes for Queen of Pain. And of course the Juggle T, he doesn't really care about that either. So while he needs the BKB somewhat, it's also not as effective as one might think. I think just for the Laguna Blade and the the Ravage, you might you, you might have to buy this game. It might be a necessary pickup, despite the Sonic Wave going through Magic Community and obviously the Omni Slash. I think you have to just say, okay, Omni Slash. We have so many summons. I shouldn't be in trouble from this. Um, Wave of Terror. There's this uh, this war that scouts this out. They're gonna see that Roche's respawned, and Mambo will counter ward it as they have mind control with the Gem of True Sight. But guess what's happening? I mean, Air's gonna take this Chuchu Tower mid, which is fine. Oh, maybe it's not fine. They're backing yeah. up, actually. They want to go home. Bambo has no TP. Um, the rest of them should. Yeah, they're, they're good to go in terms of TPs, but... They have to make sure that the racks are defended from the, the Necro War, and actually they're putting in a lot of pressure on these range racks. The range racks is almost going to fall, taking permanent damage here. And they're, they're basically ratting this out. They've pushed off, they've brought them back into the base, and now they move into the Roche Pit. And Unknown, unfortunately, is spread out, so while they want to defend this, I don't know if they have the numbers to do so. That was a very weird grave by Seal Kid. <laughs> Pretty sure cool down now, but Jonas and Fan's gonna jump in, Sunstrike's gonna go through, they call and blade one of the illusions, I believe, God. they just destroy, destroy that title. No Ravage for you, he buys back, he's gonna TP to the two, he's, he's not gonna get here in time. They're gonna try to jump in, Matt's gonna get caught out, Yule Scepter's gonna go for himself, and... Roche needs to fall immediately, Arab will pick it up, and now they just really can't fight, Deafening Blast is going, they need it back. They really can't contest this because guess what? Anap here already gone. And they get in, they get out, they get the Roshan, they say thanks very much, we're gonna see you later. God, that's that's so big for Nip. Th that Tidehunter just blew up, and I'm wondering why he didn't spend his gold. He has had 4,000 gold, actually over 4,000 gold, now has 2,600 and no buyback. <laughs> that's a big deal for Nip. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, he, how much is a full Shiva's? I think like 4,300 or something like that. 4700 okay i was a little under he yeah. could have at least maybe had to plate mail sold that stick or something but yeah um, I, i'm of, of course i don't even know if he's gonna go for sheep because i just think it would be good but he lost um, so much money for pretty much nothing there yeah they they just needed to be more deliberate about it but like we said like nip did a good job about spreading them out forcing them back and then their numbers were not advantageous Bambo making the smart decision, blinking away. He's blinking one second cooldown, and actually he, he jukes Era, and Era thinks he's running down lane still, but in fact he's in the corner, TPing away, scared. Tier 1 tower top might actually fall finally. Glyph's gonna go. Vlad's picked up now, coming out for the Tuscar. Very solid choice. Some armor is super useful. The life steal's not bad either, and uh, definitely a good item coming out for this Tusk. Oh, these cores are so farmed on the side of Nip. Like, they just keep getting more and more of a lead. 
all three of them just about what 4,000 3,000 4,000 above their respective counterparts mm -hmm. pretty impressive and as you see the gr the the graph reflects that too Nip have a strong lead this game yeah it's going to take a lot for uh, no to get back into it but they're certainly not out by any stretch 10,000 net worth or yeah 10,000 net worth and about a 10,000 experience lead as well there's that BKB that's coming out for Axon very solid item, I think. It's possible him to be a bit more aggressive. And the rating career goes down. Air actually snipes it as it's flying out of the base. And he's actually just backdooring currently because there's a... Well, not really. The creeps at the tier 3 in the middle lane. Maybe they might fight top now. Hanska was thinking about going in. Air backs away. He's maybe going to wrap on this. Mm -hmm. And they actually force out the TP from Aomi. And Lina's Bracer goes down. I think that was on the Courier. Berserker's call might go. Nice Dual Scepter onto Mad, but guess what? Mad is going to get Orchided. BKB for Jonas and Vanny's in trouble. There's going to be the Coin Blade. Blinks up in three seconds. And now Paris going to get Walrus Punch. Berserker's call. He is not getting out. Another Coin Blade comes in. Double kill for Jonas and Vanny. And they're going to head right down top lane. No buyback for the Juggernaut. Omni Slash still off cooldown. And this should be at least a set of racks. More Coin Blades. Man, he's addicted to this R button press. <laughs> Yeah, it's and one other thing too that we see there is that every single time he gets a successful Colin Blade, it really speeds up everyone around him too, and it actually makes a difference in team fights. Yeah. So if he's able to get that, that one Colin Blade effect, it kind of just spirals out of control, especially if they don't expend anything huge out of it. He has been flying a heck of a game. They're going to take down the range racks, and despite having a bad time early on, he's being aggressive too. Yule Scepter and. Web of Terror, and they actually pop the blade melt just so that they can't go on him any further. And again, a set of racks done. That's it. But yeah, they'll rotate mid now. They'll try to take this tier three tower. Air still has his Aegis. He'll uh, probably death pack in 15 seconds. So actually, they need to take down the tier two tower bottom. He's going to attempt that now. Gone. See you later. Mid lane. Ravage goes. Mind control catches a couple, but swap out now. That'll be on Seal Kid Laguna Blade. He can't grave himself in time. He actually gets it off onto Jonas and Fane. And now there's a big, big, big Sonic Wave maybe coming out. No, the Snowball comes through. Hanskin staying alive. Sonic Wave still yet to be used, but they might pop it now. Oh, but the Tornado coming out of the backside, but they still get two. Omni Slash goes in. Bambo pops up the ultimate, not that he needs it. On the other side, Arab BKB looking for Sakshika. Buyback coming in from the Axe. Doesn't have bots. He has to walk all the way down mid. Now the Yule Scepter from Bambo on top of Era. He has Aegis still. Shadow Wave going in. There's going to be the Aegis. They can't blow through that. They don't have an Axe. And he might just die anyways. No dark pack. Yeah, there he goes. Dead to Shadow Strike, I believe. But he needs some help here. He might be able to blink out. And he does get out just in time. He might head to the jungle camp. Buy or get a death pack creep now. Axe maybe going to jump in. Grave gets off. Sakshika, but what? Mule Scepter coming in. Sakshika still in trouble. The coin blade not there. It doesn't work out in favor. And he actually follows a dive that coming out from the Axe. Hera. EMP going on to Mad. He's going to get Yules. Light Strike Array. But he does get that Orchid off. It's a bit too late, however. No BKB for 29 seconds. Magic Missile. They have Detection. Laguna Blade. He's dead. Down for 80 seconds. No buyback. Pretty good defense from Unknown. Although losing that top Rax. Yep, and they, they took a lot of damage in the midst of that fight on their Tier 3 bottom 2. Invoker was ratting out pretty much throughout the most of that fight. But still, it's nice, successful defense from Unknown. Bambo is actually doing a lot of damage in these fights. If you saw there when they first went on in the mid, um, he wanted to cast that ulti with a Sonic Wave. But had he done so impulsively, he would have missed them all because the snowball came out. But he totally predicted it. And he actually was just hesitant and waited for the right time. It was a really nice play by Bambo. Most players wouldn't have done that. And they would have actually fell for it. Very interesting oh. pickup with the... Uh, um, with the Refresher Orb, it's kind of interesting because you already have a very low cooldown of 40 seconds. So I, I find that a little bit strange, to be honest. Yeah, Bambo is... He's going to have double ultimate, which I'm totally... I'm for. I just don't know how it's going to work out. By the way, Mompex points out the interesting stat. 12k experience change from that fight alone. I mean, that's fine. Experience is okay. <laughs> wow. But yeah, look at I that graph. That's insane. The net worth is uh, obviously the more important thing, but that thing just jumped drastically as well. So, again, like I said before, NIP, they, they haven't won this game yet. And basically, Unknown continue to have some solid defenses. And with a refresher now, double Queen of Pain ulti, assuming they don't jump in right to that uh, snowball, they should be able to get some kills here. There's finally the Shiva's guard components there for uh, Tidehunter. Oh. I was wondering when he was going to buy it. And he does have enough, I believe. He's going to have to sell his stick, which he does. Courier's flying back with the Mystic Staff, and there we go. So. Yeah.
We'll see I, th I think that's out. I think that's the right decision. Pretty nice. Mind control now. Pretty much rich. And he'll have to wait for his refresh orb. It's not going to be... It's his next item for sure. Yeah. And double... Two refreshes in one game on the same team. Could get a bit crazy here. For NIP, Era is... He's stifled his farm a bit. He has an ultimate orb. And what I imagine would be... Lincoln's or Scotty. Lincoln sounds pretty good. Or not mm. Lincoln's, rather. Scotty sounds pretty good. Yeah, Lincoln's is weird against Jug because the ult will still go through. Right. It's, it's not bad against, like, a Yule's combination from Lina, which is pretty much how Clink's die it's not, without BKB, but you can just BKB that out. Yeah. Speaking of Yule's. Ooh, the BKB gets off. He actually can't blink, though. He swaps back and pops the blame. He'll try to Berserk his call. He misses everybody with it. They saw it coming from a mile away. Now he gets gushed. Scream of Pain goes in. Laguna, and uh, goodbye. X. Top lane getting assaulted though. Hanskin coming with a Necro Warrior on his uh, side. And Arrow actually, they spot him out. Mike Control saw him from a mile away. And they have detection. I don't think so. And Paris is still chasing after him with that hmm. Mask of Madness. But again, all of a sudden now the base is getting assaulted. Some of these stag uh, these buildings are going to get blown up, these moon wells. Maybe not. Well, with the extra farm they've got in the last few minutes, they can actually take out these summons from Invoker a lot easier. So, this is where the Necro Book starts to kind of lose its flare a bit. Uh, nice there, Snipe from Era. Actually, bottom. Refresher has been picked up in just 0.4% of Queen of Pain games from all time, yeah. Especially with, it just seems kind of kind of uh, intuitive with the, uh, the Axe, because you already get such a reduction of the cooldown, so it would seem that it would not be that great, but eh. I guess he really, really wants that extra burst. This is just a Bambo build, straight up through and through, and with that, well, he, I mean, this could actually work out. It's possible. It's yeah, possible. I mean, it, it could because Nip is so reliant on their BKBs and their tanky nature, but, you know, obviously with the Sonic Wave going through the BKBs, it can kind of catch them off guard. So, yeah, as we see here, 1,500 or 1,150 pure damage. And that's just not for one target. That's for that's for everybody yeah. in that vicinity. And mm -hmm. it, there's a good chance all these heroes are clumped up if they get a good Ravage or, or something. So, if they get both of those off, plus Ravage, I mean, everyone's pretty much dead. For the most part, you just have Jug come in and clean up with his Omni Slash, and this is—we're talking about the perfect fight, though. That's the problem, and no fight is, you know, that perfect, unfortunately. I mean, sheep maybe. stick, sheep stick up onto the clinks, and that's his choice, huh? I guess that works out. I was expecting a Scotty. Well, <laughs> that's not it, actually. He just goes for the lockdown. The hex is going to be pretty useful on a lot of these heroes. And it allows yeah. him to just kind of get more kills, solo kills even. He might find one right here onto uh, Bambo. Oh, yeah. He, he Oh, he blinks away. He, Bambo was alone. Hmm. Yeah, well, he, he doesn't know that, unfortunately. He can't really see too much into the... Oh, oh indeed. He's Ravage dead. goes Laguna Blade, and he just dies. If they saw that, that Sheepstick on him, too, they know he doesn't have buyback. That's pretty big. And Roche is about to respawn as well. And this is very difficult to contest for NIP without Era. They have damage, but it's just not as much. My control blinks to the high ground. Jonas fan thinking about counter blinking. There's no ravage up, and they won't go for the kill. So I no need to play this really smartly because they know that they, they should have a good idea that Clinks doesn't have buyback. They need to push out the lanes, but they also need to be careful that they don't take a fight when Clinks is respawning because they know that they don't have tide uh, hunter ravage. So. If it's a 5-on-5 five five fight right now, I think they will probably lose. But if they were to push out lanes quickly and then maybe go for Roche, it did just respawn. And uh, they might just take a tower from this and back. That'll be the smart play, but who knows if basically they don't play it smart. After all, Bambo's ready to go. He's itching for an ultimate. You can see him on the backside. In fact, two ultimates. He's ready to go. Tier 1 tower, tier 2 tower. She's going to get cliffed. So NIP kind of just saying, well, they're not going to push the high ground, and even if they do, we're going to have clinks and we can defend, so... And they know that they're going to back up, because guess who's top? It's 8-Mother, and he's split-pushing with Alacrity and a couple of... Oh, Bambo jumps in with the Yule Scepter. There's going to be the Sonic Wave, and 8-Mother is going to get Laguna, and he's not dead yet. He might be able to Ghost Walk here, and Vokes ready in a couple seconds. The Omni Slash bouncing into the units, but it doesn't matter. He clears them all up and gets the kill on the 8-Mother as well. And he could have micro that a bit better and had those units stay, but he wasn't that lucky. Wow, this is a... Nice turn of events in favor of Unknown. Ag Scepter picked up for the Lina, so oh, talk about more pure damage. That'll go through everything. One of the best Ag Ag's upgrades, in my opinion, in the entire game. Um, it's really, really strong. Got a Basher now picked up onto the Juggernaut. 
really big items coming out. Could this be some 3 2 2? I mean, Nip had a very strength, good uh, control of this game, but. It, oh, there's an Invis root picked up by Axe. Did they have a gem? Yep, there's a gem yeah. on the mind control. And Jonathan walks right into the high ground, really without vision. He's going to get graved up. BKB's popped. Graves going to keep him alive, but he is still going to die. He TPs out way too late. Uh, I'm not sure what he waited for there. He could have survived had he just used that earlier. Seal Kid now going to get caught out as well. And they're going to the? lose three heroes, including <laughs> Aim Mother who died top. And they're going to get Roshan. This Aegis is theirs. And maybe, just maybe, some more buildings as well. That was that was an interesting ult from uh, Lena, I must say. But uh, kill secured, so to speak. There's Hanskin taking some damage. Oh, man, and Lena will keep dead, but he's dead anyway. doesn't even matter. He's going to snowball to buy some time, but... Yeah, this is a uh, this is turning into a an actual very good game and in favor of unknown. I would imagine right now yeah, they might take this. I mean, guess who's bottom though? Era is actually going to work at the range racks. They need some TPs and they need it immediately. Eight Mother is walking down mid. Where are the TP scrolls? Do they have any coming up from the radiant side? They have one on my control, one on Bamboo, but actually Eric gets the ranged racks with some rat type plays, and they might even do some damage to this tier three as well in the middle lane. I mean, this is the problem is that. NIP, they might not have the best team fight lineup anymore, but they can take down buildings like no problem. Yeah, this is why it's very, very important for Unknown to push out their lanes before going for ob objectives. Obviously, that was still, I think, in favor of Unknown. Oh, speaking of, Naomi's in some trouble. He has cheese. He can pop it in a second. He will be fine. He does pop the cheese. They can maybe turn this on Arrow now. Yulsip is going to go. Maybe still blocked in. BKB's out. Swap could go, and they won't use it. Cheese is forced, DKB is forced, so about an even an even change and even trade, so. Bots now for the Lena. This Lena, what she got farmed quickly. Yeah. She is really, really farmed actually. She's almost six slotted. <laughs> okay, I get no, I guess she's almost five slotted. She can sell her boots and her bottle. But yeah. uh Yeah, that's really good. Here comes the smoke, actually. There is a Tithe Hunter Rabbit available. Sachiko, I don't know if he was smoked or not, but he reveals himself. Blink Yule Scepter now going up onto the uh, poor Eight Mother. He pops the BKB. Aghanim Scepter, Laguna Blade, Aghanim Scepter, Bambo Ultimate coming out. Sonic Wave, and that BKB does literally nothing for him. Yeah, these, these, this draft actually totally nullifies the BKBs. The Juggernaut doesn't care, the Quap doesn't care, and now finally the Lina doesn't care, and that's the biggest one. And that's a support Lina, so it's all coming together here in the late stages of the game. Yeah, this is exactly what they want. If they can just keep these lanes pushed out, basically no one can do the impossible. One was once a 12,000 gold lead. Well, unfortunately, Matt's going to get caught. He won't have buyback if he dies. He jukes Era! Oh, what jukes? But it doesn't matter. He walks down and back into the lane and dies anyways. This is going to turn into a team fight. My control might be able to ravage. He has it available. Handskin is going to get caught out. He'll TP away. They just can't find a target to go on. They're looking for Seal Kid. The blink forward. There's the Yule from Bambo to set this up. Air is going to walk mid, going to try to take this tier 3 tower. Uh, Paris jumps in with his right click, gets the kill. In fact, Air is going to try to finish off this melee racks down bottom, and they don't have Glyph on the radiant side. However, they know that these things get pushed out. They'll head back bottom more than likely. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, they they do need some ways to push out these lanes quickly oh, enough. Oh, the Omni Slash on the Jonas and fan, but there's no real fault. But now the Magic Missile, maybe there is follow-up. The Blink Deck for Naomi gets the kill with Sakshika getting the last hit. And he's dead for 75. He does have buyback, though. But down bottom, air now going at the top of Mike Control. Actually, it's the other way around. He's caught. They have gems still. Bambo desperately trying to get in range. He can't blink forward. And Era actually might survive because of that beautiful orchid. Bambo blink forward. Scream. Oh, oh he gets the kill. Bambo with the blind blink scream gets it done. Oh, my lord. Wow, very nicely done. And he does have a buyback, but certainly he doesn't want to use it. Honestly, he won't goodbye, buddy. Dear God. This is it, man. Basically, I know they've won the last, like, the five last team fights that have gone their way. Provide them so much gold. They're going to head up to the high ground now using the illusions, and they're going to try to get the sigil. It goes down. Meanwhile, Ape Mother comes in. There's the tornado. The MP definitely blasts him. Maybe probably dies here. Bots in from Bambo, but... It scares him away, actually. Sorry, wave. <laughs> All right, bye. See you later. The range on that is insane, too. It doesn't look like it hits the units on the very far edge, but despite being four towers down, the Radiant is now leading in gold. Yep, that doesn't surprise me, actually, with all these items coming up. But what's Quap now finally built? BKB. 
Okay, so we're for double BKB, double ulti, double Yules, double bots, double the fun here for Bambo. Yeah, he's he's having a good time now. The smoke of deceit gank from NIP. They they really didn't use any of these in the early early game at all. So oh. they actually just they use the smoke. They realize they're behind. Mad shouldn't get caught here. He will. He blinked into the trees. Yeah, he actually will. He's gonna get tornadoed. And Yulsif comes out, but actually avoids the sun strike. And blinks oh. the Zerker's call. He jukes and he gets away. The light strike arrays further into the trees. TP not available for one second. Now it is, and he's gonna get out. He leaves. He just says, "See ya." That's so good. Very nicely done. The quick Yules and the quick Blink right afterwards. Wasting their time, wasting their smoke gank too, which is pretty important in the late stages of the game. Aegis is reclaimed, and it's actually going to be a really long respawn here for Roche. Four minutes and some change. Oh, they Arrow. see Arrow. Blink Gush. Omni Slash going in as well. Laguna, they take him down. He does have buyback, so... Okay, okay. Big kill, but... They got to get to the high ground somehow. They got to force out some buybacks. But all while this is happening, you can bet that NIP are going to finish off bottom racks. So, I mean, NIP or, yeah, no one have to TP back. They really just can't go for mid right now. Blink Ravage is going to go, but only on a Jonas fan. Actually catches on 8 Mother. Bambo trying to clean up this creep wave in the summons, but he really doesn't do that much damage. And actually, the Necro Archer finally goes go down. Meanwhile, mid lane, a fight's happening. Omni Slash going through. Right click from Sashka. His illusion is doing work. Tier 3 tower going to fall. Seal Kid is the first to fall. Buyback coming from Era. So they force out the buyback from your clinks. So actually, just going to go ahead and TP out with this Blade Fury. Smart play. And all right. That was really big for Unknown. I thought it was not going to be so good because they wasted the Ravage. There was miscommunication. Bam was like, no, I need to... I need to save my racks from minions, and the Tide wanted to go in. But they, like you mentioned, they baited out the buyback, so now it doesn't really matter. They kill Air again, they pretty much... I would say they pretty much win the game if the lanes are pushed. I mean, Aerith's not even really doing much in these fights anymore. He just gets caught out too much. His PKP's down 7 seconds too, so he's got to be really careful. He started off the game with a huge stat line, and now he has 7 deaths to his name. And if my control was here, he would get caught out, and he would be killed. And he's been playing so aggressively that honestly, this is this is dangerous. It is. It's really dangerous. This gem, he might get spotted if he walks. He's gonna walk right into mind control, isn't he? Yeah, he's gonna walk right into him. Gush is gonna go, but they do get the walrus punch oh, in. Oh no! And actually, they're all going on an illusion. And wow! And they actually just coin bladed that. Now it's on cooldown. Mad getting caught out, but the Yules comes in. Sonic Wave not doing that much. Jonas and Pan, however, getting right clicked by Sachka. The second Sonic Wave. Bambo really wanted that kill. Swap out. Eight mother caught. Now there's gonna be Omni Slash blows him up. Dead for 88 seconds. Who else is on the backside here? Hanskin falls. Double kill for sexy Bambo. Who else are they chasing after? Seal Kid. He is gonna get his grave off, but it is all crumbling beneath NIP's feet. They're all going to die with the exception of Era. He'll do his best to push out these lanes, but they actually need to go home and defend. The effigy's gonna fall. No, my control is effigy is dead. <laughs> no. Matt comes in, he'll just let Stricker and clear this up, but everyone else is pushing straight down mid. Well, Era, whoa, that's a buyback from Eight Mother. From Eight Mother. They want to yep. go for a kill onto Mad, which oh, they maybe get, but lacking? even if they do, it's not that big of a deal. They don't Sonic. even get it. Now what are you Mother, doing, this is a Mother? Dieback. Why? He realized maybe that he had to make some play, make some space for Arrow, but that is not the way to do it. He is dead for 100 seconds now, and they're going to have Bambo TP into the mid lane. This tier 1 is literally uh, a breeze away from death. And the oh, Rax no. as well probably going to fall, though. Even up the Rax is at the very least. Maybe. Oh, Arrow's going to get the Courier. Nothing and on it, but still a pretty big pickup. They're going to go for the tier 4s. Uh, no one to finish this game off. Healing Ward's gonna go, and with Bambo and Sachika, they might be able to do enough damage here. Era could just walk back home, but this might be at NIP. They were 12,000 net worth up. Are they going to lose this first game? Basically unknown. They're taking the tier fours now. Seal Kid's back up. They have to try to find a way to defend. Hanskin can get up with the snowball. Walrus punch. Ravage comes in from my control, and they are gonna kill both of them immediately ASAP. Bambo gets the double kill with the Sonic Wave, and Era comes in, hexes up Sachika. But he gets Laguna Blade, he's low. Berserker's Call is going to go, Air is going to fall. He has no buyback. Jonas and Fan is the only one alive, and GG finally oh. called. What a comeback. It's finally complete. Basically a no take the first game in a barn burner. If I've ever seen one, what a freaking crazy game. My god. Wow, that was that was really fun to watch as a spectator for sure. Definitely not fun to play if you're a nit because, man, they should have. <laughs> it's hard to say they should have won it, but I, I would definitely.